hey guys welcome back to my channel today i'll be discussing on something called a concept known as fist patrick skin type i know that a lot of people are hearing this for the very first time you don't even know you've not even heard about it talk more of knowing how important it is but it's something i think you should have in your subconscious if you want to properly take care of your skin when you are taking skin advice when you are seeking to undergo any form of cosmetic procedure when i say cosmetic procedure i'm not talking about nose this one either one i mean things like chemical peels laser therapy all these other sort of cosmetic procedures and you know just just shopping for products essentially so if you're interested in knowing what this means and why it's important to you please keep on watching please if you're joining us for the very first time welcome my name is amaka i am an esthetician and i am passionate about helping people of color achieve healthy skin using products that are safe and effective i talk about business skincare and you know other random things so let's get into the video <music> Okay, let me talk about why I decided to make this video in the first place. So, two main reasons. The first one is, I keep getting questions like, is this product for fair people? Is it for dark people? And I'm wondering, where did this thing come from? Like, where did it come from? So that's one. Then, second one is, this will be a foundation for subsequent videos. Like, a lot of times when I'm giving my advice, I like it being very nuanced. So, you may be hearing things like, if you are a Fitzpatrick skin type 5 and 4, do this. If you are a Fitzpatrick skin type 1, 2, 3, do this. So what's Fitzpatrick skin typing? So this is a method of skin classification formulated by or founded by someone, a dermatologist, an American dermatologist known as Thomas Fitzpatrick in 19, I think 1975. That's irrelevant a while ago. Do you get? And essentially, this classified skin based on genetics skin color eye color hair color and the skin's reaction to ultraviolet rays to the sun so how quickly do you burn how quickly do you turn essentially so there are two foundations in which skin was classified and based off of this we're divided into six types so it goes from skin type one to skin type 6. A diagram will be here so you guys can visualize what I'm saying as I'm saying it. So, Fitzpatrick skin type 1. Now, genetic disposition. So, they are these individuals have pale white skin, blonde or red hair, blue eyes, and freckles. They burn under the sun. They always burn. The bones are painful, there's redness, blistering, and peeling, and they never tan. Then, skin type 2. Now, these individuals have white skin, blonde or red hair, and blue or green eyes. Now, they usually burn and they rarely tan. Fitzpatrick skin type 3. Now, darker Caucasians, they usually have, they, are, they are white as well, but not as white as 1 and 2. So, um, they have blue, green, or brown eyes. So, melanin is beginning to creep in. They burn as well, but not as intensive as one and two. So mild burns, they tan moderately. Then for skin type four, these are light brown skin. Now you're entering brown. Um, usually have brown eyes, common ethnic background, Hispanic, Mediterranean, South European. They burn, but they have minimal burns and they tan easily. Then Fitzpatrick skin type four. Now, these are dark brown skin and they consist of um, some Hispanic and some black. Now, let me talk about dark brown skin. Within most ethnic groups, but let me say race, let me talk about black race, the one I'm conversant, conversant with. They have light skin people and people that are really dark. So, when you get dark brown and you are light skinned but still african or maybe black american or black you may think you don't fall under this category however i should know that when you hear dark brown it's not dark brown in comparison with black people it's dark brown in comparison with the entire spectrum of skin tones so you may be light but when put beside a pure caucasian skin 
you're still like sort of dark brown dig it and that's why elastic is not just as to the skin color it's also your reaction to the sun so you find out that you may be light skinned light skinned but you you have never burnt like you have never gone under the sun especially when in nigeria it's hot you've never gone under the sun and seen a blister but you tan so you see why you are light-skinned but you are not a one or a two <laughs> or hell a three <laughs> do you understand so yeah um so i'm saying that because when you hear dark brown so light-skinned black people like I, i'm definitely not here you're definitely not here but you or you or you don't burn his patrick skin type six <laughs> now this a dark brown um melanin queens and they have darker black skin they never burn and that tanning is mad jesus like <laughs> when you go under the sun <laughs> the fan that will follow you <laughs> so yeah these are um the Fitzpatrick skin types and their characteristics so let's at the foundation of this thing eh, and the foundation is melanin the foundation is how much melanin do you have in your skin and there are two reasons why well, there are three reasons why this is essential so the first one is for dermatologists to be able to determine or gauge the potential risk of a patient to skin cancer to help them manage the patient properly the lesser you are in the scale unfortunately the more at risk you are in developing skin cancer now the second um, issue is for skin specialists as well to be able to predict how a client would react to common cosmetic procedures for example um, there are certain things that you would do to somebody on the lower end of the spectrum you cannot try it in your life to people at the higher end of the spectrum now for example things like ablative laser treatment now what that means is essentially it involves the burning off of the entire epidermis of the skin you can never try it on somebody of color people with deeper skin because the hyperpigmentation that will follow suit there hey you can't even try it you can't even try it also things like chemical peels you have to be very careful when dealing with you know so deeper skin and the one that i think that affects you is when buying skincare products now the good thing is most skincare products can be used by all skin types and when i say for the purpose of this video i'm talking about all Fitzpatrick skin types not oily combination dry that's a different conversation so most skin types so moisturizers hydrators um lotions um serums most things can be used by all skin types topical application however certain measures when it comes to when it comes to acids and bleaching ingredients especially hydroquinone there are a lot of nuances surrounding it now let me explain when you're using acids especially AHAs especially glycolic acid and you are you fall within the higher end of the spectrum of a deeper skin tone you have to be very very careful so when you are watching your favorite you know skin influencer use the ordinary glycolic acid 10 times a day two times five times a, a day however ask yourself uh, uh please what Fitzpatrick skin type does this person fall under so you have to be careful Am I saying that you should not use glycolic acid? Absolutely not. It's a fantastic product. It helps, you know, helps you exfoliate the surface of the skin, helps product penetrate in better. Amazing ingredients, but you have to be careful if you are of deeper skin tone. Don't use um, glycolic acid at higher percentage, except it has been buffered down. Don't use it too much. Dig it. So, can keep it to once a week, twice a week. Just try and just be care very careful so when you listen to people advice on how this glycolic acid blah 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 think about what what end of the spectrum you fall under yes things like mandelic lactic still the same thing applies although they're a lot milder so they're a lot more um tolerable for people down the Fitzpatrick spectrum so that's one and that thing again you should bear in mind is i said bleaching um agents especially hydroquinone so um people up the spectrum can use hydroquinone and <laughs> define dig it but you you have to use it in like moderation number one if you overdo it 
at high percentages and for a long period of time can develop something called prognosis that if you are of deeper skin tone which is a permanent pigmentary disorder like it gives you this black bluish cast and you know may never ever go away so that's one then two you can also experience hypopigmentation you can experience rebound hyperpigmentation so these are things that you should consider when using bleaching ingredients so where you we are listening to somebody and they're saying they have this hydroquinone thing and they use every day of their lives look at the skin tone ah ask yourself and ask yourself should i venture into this <laughs> do you get also also effects this was not in my notes actually bro <laughs> yeah the effect your expectations not to manage your expectations our hyperpigmentation is really deeper and a lot more intense when you're listening to a skincare and blogger or influencer and the person is advising you on things that would that works for them for the hyperpigmentation you should always know that your own is different the way your melan sites work they are different that you can try that but it may not work for you and dig it or it may not work as fast now why i say this is that i see a lot of you know people say how alpha abutin from the ordinary brand was fantastic they used it and they and then i see my melanin sisters try the same thing and are frustrated that it's not working for them now there's some people that it still have worked for but a lot of people complain that it doesn't work and that's because sometimes a lot of times you took the advice from people that are not within your fitzpatrick skin type and they are not lying it just may not work as quickly for you or you may need more than that so just a way of managing your expectations especially as it relates to treatment of hyperpigmentation if you buy things based off of reviews like if you don't see somebody that's not worked for you're not buying then i advise you to watch people that fall within your fitzpatrick skin type that have used the product especially as it relates to hyperpigmentation and have seen improvement it would help you manage your expectations like more also when opting for cosmetic procedures when you see you know your fellow your favorite uh, you know caucasian influencer explaining how she did one they're calling something some something peel blah 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 ah tinko hmm can i do this thing <laughs> do you understand be sure you can do it all i also advise that if you're going for cosmetic procedures go to somebody that is experienced in dealing with skin of color i'd not say go to a black dermatologist or a dermatologist of color i said go to someone that's experienced in dealing with people of color so a person may be wise maybe anything so far as person is experienced in dealing with people of color you are it's a safer route to take do you get so uh, so i don't want to listen to a skin influencer say she did something you now copy what she said she did and carry it to your skincare provider i want to do this particular thing well i want to assume that when you bring it they will know that you can't they can't do it on you but just in case and I'm, 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 people have it has been known that they have done things to darker skin people that were not supposed to have been done on them now you understand when i get confused when i see some local like skincare companies advertise things like this one is for caramel skin this one is for fair skin this one is for dark skin i get confused you see you are advertising something to people that fall within the same fitzpatrick skin type I'm talking about people that you know manufacture products in nigeria and the audience is black people and you're saying you have a kit for fair you have a kit for caramel you have a kit for black and i'm wondering what exactly is in that kit like what exactly do you have for darker skin tones that you don't that a caramel skin person cannot use or a lighter black person cannot use i honestly i i i, I am lost are you saying do you, it makes more sense then eh, if they say we sell bleaching and not bleaching products because that's what it sounds like in my ear this light one is containing hydroquinone or all those things and it's for if you want to be very fair this caramel one contains things like the kojic acid abutin so you be, you'll be just somewhere in between and this black one is for just moisturizing then it makes sense because i don't understand something is for face something is for dark i i don't understand so i'm not a skincare formulator i'm a cosmetic formulator if 
you are one and you have products that are for fair and for that people and you have like reasons why certain products cannot be used for fair or for dark people please i want to join the conversation leave a comment down let's let's talk about this thing otherwise to me it just sounds like false marketing as i said i'm open to learning I'm open to coming on camera and saying oh oops actually it makes sense now i i really want to say that so please i would like us to further this conversation in the comment section tag a skincare for minuto let the person explain to us we want to know i mean i want to know i'm interested in having the conversation anyway thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like share subscribe and i'll catch you in my next video bye